Mike Green here live at SES New York, where we just had a, a fabulous uh, keynote with uh, Mike Pru, the author of this fabulous book called Social TV. Um, some fascinating takeaways. Great keynote, by the way. Thank you so much. I had a blast. You're the social TV guy. How did you get the idea for social TV, if that's not too obvious? The idea for the book, um, so I work for Hill Holiday, and uh, we do a lot with our clients in television. And we really wanted to figure out how to uh, ensure what the next wave of TV was happening. So we put on an event in 2010 called TV Next. And coming out of that event, Stacey Shepparton, who's my co-author, she also runs TV at Hill Holiday, we said, you know what, there's a lot more to tell around this story of the convergence between television, social media, the web, and mobile. So we approached Wiley. They loved the idea. It was a hot topic just gaining traction at that time, and social TV was born. What's happening with this back channel that's going on and everybody's got like one, two, three, even four screens people are talking about now. Um, but for a marketer, how important is that? I mean, I, I read something recently about participation marketing, uh, which, which is, incidentally is a new book with uh, Wiley. You should take a look at that one. Um, but are we actually marketing? It's not so much advertising. It is more about people just being included in, in the experience, yeah? That's part of it. You know, what, what we talk a lot about at Hill Holiday is driving choice in marketing because not all marketing impressions or not all advertising impressions are created equal. There are impressions that are intended, like TV commercials, that you really don't have a choice whether or not to watch or not. If you're watching TV live, pre-roll is another example. But when you make a choice to engage in marketing, receptivity increases, you're actually more interested in the message from the brand. So online is a great way to bridge what someone is seeing on TV, and if they want more information, they have ways using social media or the web or mobile to be able to get more information because they're choosing to do so. So there was an interesting thing that you mentioned during the keynote, which is kind of like another book I'm going to mention called Brand Hijack that I read a long time ago, which is more about the audience taking the brand and shaping it themselves. What you mentioned in the keynote is the other way around, that another brand can hijack your brand and just ride on the tail. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it's very tempting, I think, for brands to join a Twitter conversation about a TV show, especially for big events like the Oscars or the Grammys or the Super Bowl. Um, but, you know, I think they should just think whether or not they're really adding value to that conversation or if they're just blasting the back channel with a bunch of advertisements. And we're in danger of crossing that line. And so we have to make sure that we're complementing the content that's on TV, not just simply hijacking it for you know entertaining brand purposes. So was the Oreo thing, was that like an inspired moment or do you think that was just good luck? It was, uh, I, I think Oreo and, and their agency, they were prepared to do that kind of spontaneous or real-time marketing to use the buzzword. So they had the infrastructure in place already and then they were able to serendipitously take advantage of that moment but it doesn't mean that all brands should start doing that. If that happens, I think we're going to have kind of a uh, poor back channel experience as everything will become you know, witty, you know, pithy things from, from brands. And, and who wants that? People running around switching off the lights at every stadium. In the, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, let's just talk a little bit about the book. I mean, there are a couple of things in there that are really interesting where you, you contrast where TV has been before TV listings, how it's becoming... Um, that, again, one of the interesting things in the keynote was it's not about the box, it's not about the uh, the unit itself. TV is something entirely different now, I guess, yeah? It is. You know, Stacey and I, we uh, the book doesn't only look forward, but we took a look back at the history of television and how different things came about. So we did a lot of research to kind of give a greater dimension to this, what is it, 74-year-old medium now in the United States. Um, and it's, a, it's one that has changed a lot, and we have to approach it as new media, and we can't think about TV as just the physical TV set, because this device can be just as much TV as the TV set in my living room. So what are you going to write next, Mike? Uh, not, not sure. You know, there's a, I, I dedicated my book to uh, my mentor uh, at my college, and he was someone that affected my career in a, in a big way. So, I, you know, I'm noodling with writing a book about mentorship, um, which doesn't have to do with television, but it has to do with uh, people really um, being affected and influenced in their careers. So, look out for the new book. It's called Social Mentorship. <laughs> <laughs> My great session this morning. Thank yeah, you very thank much you so for that. Much, Mike. I appreciate it. Here we are live at SES New York. More to come later.